Uh, if you haven't typed those into the chat box uh, or the question box that is in the uh, GoToWebinar application, and uh, at the end of the webinar, I'm going to take a look in there and answer anything that might be in there. So before I get started on the actual products, uh, I have to talk about what gives ISC the, or I'm sorry, uh, who Catalyst Acoustics Group is. Um, <clears throat> so they're actually our parent company. Uh, they, they hold an elite group of noise control companies. Uh, it offers a broad portfolio of sound control solutions. It includes acoustic, seismic, vibration, uh, and all sorts of different noise control. Uh, you may have noticed that I've used both noise control and sound control terms already. Uh, I do like to differentiate uh, differentiate these two. So IAC Acoustics does majority of its work in controlling noise, uh, which is exactly what this product line is intended to do. However, we do have product lines that are more about tuning the acoustics of a room uh, rather than reducing the noise. So the way I like to describe it is noise can be viewed as your neighbor mowing their lawn, sound is you mowing your lawn, and music is your neighbor mowing your lawn. The point is, the terms are completely subjective. Uh, it really all depends on the application. The source is identical, right? It's all a lawnmower for each situation I described. Um, one of them is annoying, which is the noise. One of them is just kind of, you know, is what it is. You're buying your own grass. And then music is your neighbor doing the chores for you. So that's that's kind of how I like to look at it. So <clears throat> the ISC Acoustics Architectural Enclosure team there are three main uh, components here. So we have Tom Hines. He is the uh, director of ISC Acoustics. Uh, he's actually been working with ISC for over 20 years. Uh, he was an installer for a uh, majority of that time. Um, he's installed all of the ISC Acoustics product. He's been on some of the largest installation uh, projects that we've had. Um, and so he just really has uh, an exceptional product knowledge on, on all of our, our different offerings. Uh, then we have Rick Eatsy. Now Rick, was, he's our architectural sales estimator. So he actually spent 20 years of his career working in the manufacturing facility. So he brings a unique um, set of skills and knowledge to our sales team. And the reason I say that is, you know, typically salespeople don't have that manufacturing uh, knowledge and experience of how this product is actually made. You know, we could talk about you know, the machines that we have and you know, we can talk about how it's made but he actually was the one building this stuff so having that kind of knowledge and, and just kind of the know-how of of, uh, of that kind of thing is, is really important and it helps us out a lot um, when we're having to describe you know certain issues or just describing you know how one of our panels are made or something like that he, he really helps us out there uh, then there's me Jeremy Vitsa I'm the architectural sales manager I actually went to school for acoustics, got my bachelor's of science um, from Columbia College in Chicago. And I've been with ISC for just about five years now. So again, before I deep dive into the product, I, I have to talk about what gives ISC an advantage over the competition. I could talk about this for the entire webinar, but I'll keep it short, or I'll try to keep it short. Uh, the first thing I'll focus on is the in-house powder coating line. Uh, the, the big advantage of having this in-house is it eliminates the need to outsource, obviously, and by doing that, um, we can keep our lead time uh, reasonable. So when you have to outsource this, your lead time can lengthen substantially uh, for a lot of reasons. One is, you know, you got to think about the transit time uh, to and from the factory, the powder coat factory. Uh, also, once the material arrives to that powder coat factory, uh, you pretty much have to just get in line and wait. So, you know, example, if I send them out, you know, two doors that I need to get powder coated uh, and they just started a project of 10,000 mufflers, you know, that those 10,000 mufflers is a much larger project than my two doors. And so the odds of me convincing them to let me cut in front is the, the odds are very slim. Uh, so you're just kind of waiting in line. Uh, and then the worst part is, say we get our doors back to our factory and there are imperfections. Well, guess what? You got to send it back to the factory have them redo it and it can just, it becomes very convoluted and your lead time uh, can really get out of hand there. And so one of the reasons we're able to keep our lead time uh, so so minimal and keep it in such a good standing is because of this in-house powder coating line. Uh, and again, just a massive advantage to, uh, you know, when compared to competitors that do not have that in-house. Uh, we also guarantee the performance of all of our products with laboratory test data. So any number that we publish, we will have uh, 
data to back that number up. Um, we have a, a library of past project templates, designs, drawings, uh, really all this documentation we can lean on. So it's actually pretty rare for us to come across a problem that we haven't addressed previously. Um, you know, and, and with Tom Hines, who's been with IAC for as long as he has, and we have a couple of designers here that have been working in this industry for you know 20 plus years. <clears throat> you know, we can lean on all that expertise and experience, um, and really just tackle any problem that comes across our desk, um, but have experience in you know with that problem. Um, and so it's it's uh, it's pretty cool the uh, the team that we have here. So IAC Acoustics has UL listings for electrical and fire. Uh, our door is going to have a UL fire rating of up to 90 minutes with a veneer, uh, and a UL fire rating of up to 180 minutes without the veneer. And also, all of IAC electrical components are UL listed, as well as their assemblies. And every single electrical panel will have its own individual UL tag. Now you can see this uh, picture, uh, the, the top right there. That is just an example of the tag that every single electrical panel is going to have. And again, just so the components themselves are listed as well as the assemblies. Uh, we also hang and swing every door that comes through the shop in order to ensure proper fit, finish, and function in the field. Uh, part of our QC process is to take pictures of every door in the open and in the, and in the closed position while it's hanging in the rack. Um, and what we do actually, we, we have something called the secondary submittal. So what that is, is uh, it's this, this folder that contains all of those pictures uh, of, of the door you know, part of the QC process, they, they drop those pictures in there so that if this thing gets, you know, goes onto the field and there's an issue, you know, we can use those pictures to to help our, you know, the customer. And, and let's say it's it. So we don't use those pictures to say, hey, this was perfect in our shop. It's 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 your problem. We use them to to help figure out what's going on, right? So if if the door left our shop in in working condition and in good condition and now all of a sudden it's installed and there's an issue we want to help figure out what happened more so than like point a finger you know we just want to figure out and help uh you know with the situation so again it's called a secondary submittal um you can also see in this picture on the left uh there's you know there's a a few pieces of hardware on there so we have the closer up top that and that that latching hardware on the uh you know, the, with the lever there. So I like to show this one because a lot of the times in architectural enclosures, we only have push pull handles. And I like to show this picture just to demonstrate that we can do, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of security enclosures that have very advanced security hardware. And, you know, we'll, we'll purchase and install all that uh, pertinent hardware in our factory. And again, the reason for that is to ensure a proper fit, finish and function in the field. You can see there's a, a window in this door as well. That's one of our narrow lights there, but we can do full glass, we can do half glass. Uh, really, we can we can make that window whatever size it needs to be. But enough of that, let's actually talk about <clears throat> the reason that you all joined this webinar. And that is the Acutone 2 series. And inside of that Acutone 2 series is the architectural enclosures. Uh, the slogan here is any size, any shape, and any color. Uh, with no exposed fasteners. So the first category I'm going to talk about is the classic architectural enclosure series. And this includes the single wall, the enhanced single wall, and the double wall models. So the single wall is a 40 NPR. It's actually four inch thick wall construction. Um, this booth is going to get you an NIC 50 performance. Uh, you can increase that up to an NIC 53. You can get that three-point jump. The way we do that is we actually add uh, just a one-inch, one-inch thick interior enhancement package. Um, so there's actually a bunch of standard sizes on our brochure here. So all these brochures are listed online. One thing I will say, I, I'm not, I'm not very fond of the fact that we call them standard sizes. The reason I say that is, think of the motto here that I just told you: any size, any shape, any color. Any size is the first part of that. So I like to view the standard sizes more as starting points. So if one of those starting points works for you, perfect. If, but if it doesn't, if you need to adjust those dimensions in any way, that's totally fine. We can do it. And your price doesn't increase because you're coming off of a, a starting point. Obviously, if you increase the dimensions, there's more material, more labor, so your price will go up because of that. But we don't increase the price because you're off of a standard size. So I'd like to just point that out, and uh, maybe one day I can get a change to say 
uh, starting points, but um, just just keep in mind that any size, any shape, any color, that is the motto here. So don't get stuck on the standard size there. Uh, but we can do, you know, three foot four is, is one of the smaller boots that we can actually build. Uh, there are limitations to how small it can go just because of, you know, the, the, the door frame, uh, the actual dimension of the door frame itself. Um, it says we can go up to 11 by 10, but we can build these things massive. So we, you know, touching back on the security enclosure world, we actually build full like 40 by 40 two-story buildings uh, out of this material. So 11 by 10 is not the largest we can go. Um, we can do this, we can make these things as large as you need them to be. Uh, we can do odd shapes, right? So we've done like, uh, we've done spheres, you know, we've done uh, what, what's called a tetra booth, which is more of like a triangle, obviously squares, rectangles, things like that. But we can really, we can design these things to be uh, really whatever shape uh, you need it to be. So this is the 800 NPR series. It's uh, the, in, the enhanced single wall. So uh, it's actually a four inch thick wall panel. And then we just add a four inch thick interior enhancement package. But what we also do is we increase that door to be an STC 61. All that together is gonna to get you an NIC 60 performance. Um, so the enhancement package that I keep talking about, it, I have a slide further on in this uh, webinar that I'll talk more about it, but really what it consists of is uh, metal liner panels, fabric panels, and then a chair rail that covers the joint between those two. Um, but again, I'll go into more detail on an upcoming slide here. So this is the 120 NPR series. It's our double wall model. It is uh, two four inch thick panels and it has a four inch airspace in between those two panels. So you actually have a 12 inch thick wall construction. And you can see on this drawing, we actually use two of our STC 51 doors. Uh, all this together, you're looking at a performance of NIC 70. Um, now there is the option to do the in-swing outswing, which is what's shown on this drawing, but you could also switch it to be a tandem outswing door. Um, you know, one, one reason that I see that is let's say, you know, so in the medical world, we actually use this exact same product to build like audiometric booths and things like that. Sometimes they'll buy a double wall room, but it's like really small. So there's not a lot of room on the inside. And the last thing you want is a three foot leaf swinging into inside of that room, uh, when it's, when there really isn't a lot of room in there to begin with. So that's a really big reason why people will choose the double outswing door just to kind of, you know, save the space that, the, you know, the lack thereof space inside of that room. Uh, so next we'll talk about the ACT series suites. Uh, it actually stands for uh, control test. Uh, audiometric control test is, is the uh, full, the full stand, uh, name there, but uh, we, we uh, this product is universal for medical and for um, architectural enclosures. And so we kind of took this from the medical world. So really what it is, is you have a control room and a live room, right? So audiometric control test, uh, we just changed it to a live room. And we have five different models here. So this one that you're looking at right now is the 40 ACT. Uh, again, this is single wall control room, single wall live room, both of which will get you an NIC 50 performance. Um, just like the standard single wall room, you can add an enhancement package here and get a, a three point jump on your NIC rating up to an NIC 53. And you can see here that these are independent rooms. And what I mean by that is they are completely independent from each other. Um, so if we have it, if you, so if this is the way you buy it, you'll have a closure plate uh, that's covering that four inch air, air space in between those two rooms. And so you, obviously you won't be able to if you're outside the booth, you can't look down the center of that and see, you know, so we'll cover that, that gap up. But there is an option to share that center wall. Um, a couple of reasons that people do it. Uh, one big reason is uh, for cost savings. Now, when you share that wall, you're removing uh, an entire wall of panels and a window there. So obviously um, there will be cost savings there. You also, it's a little bit less on the installation. Um, so it's, it's a good good route to go if, if we're very, very close to budget, but just a little bit over, it's a good route to go. Another reason that people do it is um, if they don't have a lot of real estate in the host facility to begin with. Uh, so what I mean by that is if they have space constraints. So if you remove that wall, 
and that airspace, you're actually shaving the, total, the overall width of that booth by eight inches. Um, so it, it's another good reason to do that. Uh, the third reason is right now, the way it's drawn, uh, you actually have pretty high performance from room to room, from the control room to the live room. If that isn't, you know, of the utmost importance, um, that's another option. Is it, sharing sharing the, that wall there? It's going to reduce your performance room to room. If you don't need, uh, you know, super high performing room to room performance, uh, you can always share that wall and, uh, and not have it. So this is the 800 ACT. The only difference on this one is we make that live room our enhanced single wall. So I'll switch back and forth a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So all we do is we change the live room to be our enhanced single wall. Uh, so again, these are independent rooms, but that live room will get you an NIC 60 and that control room will get you an NIC 50. Now again, just like on, on the other one, you can share that center wall here, but if you're, if you're buying an 800 ACT, the performance of that live room is obviously important, right? More important than if you're just going with the same single wall. So sharing the wall here on this one wouldn't make a lot of sense, uh, but it is an option. So this is the 120 ACT, uh, both of which are just double wall rooms. Uh, these are integrated now. This is the first one we've seen where they're actually integrated into each other um, versus these other ones that have been all independent from each other. So both rooms are gonna get you that uh, NIC 70 performance. Now these next two are uh, a little, little different. So I'm gonna switch back and forth so you can see what I'm talking about here. So we have the 140 ACT and the 160 ACT. And the only difference is the 140 ACT is a single wall control, double wall live integrated into each other, where the 160 ACT is a single wall control, double wall live independent from each other. The only difference here is we're sharing one of those center walls. As you can see, this one, the 160 has three walls in between the two rooms, where the 140 has two. That is the only difference. Actually, the 140 ACT is our most popular model. Uh, the reason for that is most of the time, um, customers want the maximum performance in that live room. Uh, that's where all the recording is taking place and things like that. So they want, you know, as good a performance as, as they can get. Where with the control room, it's not as important. They need some sort of isolation there, but the NIC 50 rating is typically uh, enough, right? So again, this is the most popular model. And that, you know, the reason being that they get the performance they need in the live room and they have some sort of isolation in the control room. So I put this slide in here just to kind of illustrate the height capabilities that IAC has. So on the right, that is actually the standard medical uh, interior height. It's about six foot six and three quarter inch. On the left, uh, that's that's more standard for architectural enclosures, which is uh, about seven foot nine. Now we buy our stock steel in 12 foot lengths, so we can very easily increase it, the inside height there to 12 feet. Um, we can actually increase it more than that. Say you need like a 16 foot inside height, we can very easily do that. When you get above 12 though, uh, it, it gets a little more interesting because we have to start staggering those wall panels and using structural support. Um, but we can very easily do it, you know, touching back on the structural, I'm sorry, the uh, security enclosure uh, product. We've built two story uh, buildings out of, out of this stuff. So it's, I shouldn't say it's easy for us to do, um, but it's, it's very achievable for us, right? So all we do, like I said, is we start staggering wall panels and, and using structural support for, for that kind of thing. So here you can see the ISC options for the uh, color of panels, carpet, and fabric wrap panels. So we have a, a multitude of options to choose from when it comes to customizing your booth. Now, this picture on the left here, it demonstrates what the interior enhancement package uh, actually looks like. So on the bottom there, you have our metal liner panel, which is pretty much just a, a one inch thick uh, uh, you know, actual metal perf panel that we use. And then above that, you have our uh, fabric panels. And again, that's a one inch thick uh, fabric panel, a fabric wrap panel there. And then it comes with our black chair rail that just kind of covers the joint between the two. Um, there is the option, uh, if you don't want that metal liner panel, um, we can go floor to ceiling fabric instead. Uh, it's actually pretty popular. Uh, so a lot of people just would rather have more absorption 
and that'll come from the fabric panel. Uh, so they'll just decide to go with full length fabric just to get uh, more of a dead environment on the inside of the room. Um, yeah, so I do have this chart in, uh, in a PDF form. So if it's a little difficult to see here on this slide, certainly feel free to reach out to me and I can send it over to you uh, in PDF form so it's a little bit easier to, uh, to look at. So that is the architectural enclosure uh, models that we that we really have, uh, but you know that is the start, that, that that's where we start is figuring out you know uh, the, the product that's actually offered. Uh, but then you got to think about a lot of design considerations, um, and the first two big decisions that you need to make are the desired performance and the desired booth model, right? So those are again that's really the starting point here. Um, so you need to figure out is NIC 50, is our single wall booth going to be sufficient in terms of performance or do you need to jump up to the NIC 70 double wall performance? Uh, the answer to that question lies in what you're actually using the enclosure for. Um, and if you're really at a loss, certainly feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I can help uh, talk you through it. And at least just give recommendations. And, you know, and the next the next thing is is the model that you need. So do you need an actual just like a straight up booth, or do you need it to have a control room and a live room um, and, and things like that? So those are the first two questions that we really need to answer when trying to design uh, one of these booths. Next, you have to consider, are there any host facility constraints, such as the host room heights, or if there was a support column in the way? Uh, so if there's a support column in the way, we actually run into that pretty often. Uh, it's easy for us to accommodate. We can just design the booth to kind of jog around that column. Uh, we've seen it where there's a column going directly through the center of one of our rooms. Again, we can we can accommodate that. We just need to know about it. Um, you know, if there's if there's host room height issues, uh, again, touching back on on the capabilities of the inside height, we can reduce it. We can increase it. Really doesn't matter. Um, we just need to know what the inside height of the host room is because you need to have a little bit of clearance above our room so that. People can get up there and connect all the electrical. Uh, if you have like host HVAC connecting to this room, you need space up there for the HVAC contractor to run his flex duct um, to our collars. So you got to think about that. And we will we will tie tie in the booth using closure plates. So let's say we leave like a foot of space between the top of the IAC booth and the host uh, facility ceiling. We'll provide closure plates that'll connect to the top of our booth and tie it into that host room to kind of just make it look like it's part of the existing structure. It's not just a piece of furniture that was dropped in. Uh, one thing that is missed pretty frequently is if there's any local, state, or federal uh, requirements, such as if the room needs to be ADA compliant. Uh, if it does need to be ADA compliant, there are a lot of options uh, that we have in terms of um, our floor system to help achieve that. So our standard floor actually has a pretty big step up. It's about six and one eighth inch thick uh, from the host floor to inside the room. Obviously that is not ADA compliant unless you uh, have the space to build uh, the ramp for it. But we have a lot of different low profile options ranging from uh, a half inch floor all the way up to that six and one eighth inch. Uh, we also can install it without a floor at all. Um, a lot of the times the way people will get around the the step up is to install it in a pit to actually recess this into the host slab. Now, if it's like a finished building, uh, that might be an issue. Um, but, you know, again, there's there's a lot of different ways we can help out uh, with ADA compliance, you, you know, even in terms of the clear opening width of the door. Um, all we need to know, though, is that is that that is a concern and we can help talk you through it. And again, if you have any questions or want to see some details about our low profile floors, I'm happy to go through those in more detail on a project by project basis. Just certainly reach out to me and we can do that. Another design consideration to think about is what electrical you're going to need. So what comes standard in our booth is a uh, uh, quantity one receptacle, a duplex receptacle, and a toggle switch for the lights. But we have options to add quad receptacles, dimmer switches, uh, empty electrical boxes that you can use for data drops, phone drops, fire strobes, uh, thermostats, panic buttons, whatever it is uh, that you need to put in there, we can we can prep the panel for you. The way that works is you'll have the empty electrical box inside of the panel. It'll be flush. Uh, it'll be flush once you put that cover plate on with your actual panel. 
and we'll have conduit stepping up through the, uh, the top of that panel so it can be connected through the roof. So we'll prep the whole thing for you. The actual circuitry of, of like a fire strobe or a data drop and all those wires are, will be by others, but we'll prep it for you so that all you got to do is fit your wires through and install the actual unit. Now you also want to think about if this is an architectural enclosure, say you're building a studio or something like that, you got to think about if you're going to need a patch panel. Uh, these aren't very common um, for architectural enclosures because a lot of the times people will just uh, use a pass-through or something like that to feed wires in. But we can do it. We have a, a custom manufacturer that builds these for us. Um, they're very popular in the medical world, obviously, because you have to connect all your audio metric equipment uh, and run it into the room and things like that. Um, but our standard panel includes 12 quarter inch jacks. Uh, it also includes two USB and one uh, two inch pass through. But if that's not going to cut it, again, we have a custom manufacturer who can build build these things at whatever dimension we need them with whatever connections we need in the panel itself. Uh, all you got to do is let me know what connections you need and how many, and we can get that uh, get that done for you. So I also want to just go over a few examples of products that we've done and uh, you know how we were able to overcome certain uh, issues. So this is um, this is the Jewish Braille Institute. So it included uh, quantity six voiceover booths. Uh, each of them had oversized windows and floor to ceiling uh, fabric wrap panels. Um, so the larger windows uh, were they actually requested these because they were concerned that the translators that were sitting inside of the booth uh, would be a little bit claustrophobic. So we installed uh, oversized windows to help give it a more of an open feel. Um, and then they wanted the full length fabric panels to add more absorption because they're sitting there recording these translators and they wanted a really dead environment to help you know, with the clarity uh, and things like that of the actual recording. Um, so again, that is, that's why we went with the full length fabric now, this is an interesting project. This is actually the first project that uh, I was involved with when I IAC, uh, when I got hired back in the day. So it's the Comcast Universal Sphere. It's located in the heart of downtown Philadelphia. Uh, one thing that was unique here, uh, one of the requirements was to provide high performing uh, odd shaped panels. So some of the panels were triangular shaped, some were trapezoidal. There was even a 16 sided shape, uh, which is uh, interesting. interesting enough called a hexadecagon and you can see in that picture on the left it's kind of that circle looking thing there it's actually a 16-sided shape it's not a circle and I'll never forget the name of it because I, I heard that name about 500 times in our uh, our daily meetings um, but so this this these pictures here just kind of show the the odd shaped panels that we can actually fabricate in our facility uh, we don't only do rectangular panels we can do we can do circle panels, and uh, I've seen it done before. It's a difficult thing, um, but we can we can even go as far as doing a circle panel. Another interesting requirement here was they needed to have a, an emergency hatch door. So what we were actually building here there was like a it's a movie theater, um, and so if there was like a, a show going on in there, and there was a bunch of people in there, and first responders had to get inside of that that uh, the sphere. We needed to include an emergency hatch door. Now, this thing was built out of our STC 64 door, which is five inches thick, very, very heavy. And I'll skip ahead real quick. You can see on this uh, on the left here, the hatch door is actually opening up at an angle. So not only is the door heavy on its own, but now you're fighting gravity trying to push this thing open. So what we had to do um, is we actually ended up supplying some gas-assisted springs on that thing. So we had two gas-assisted springs on that door so that, say, first responders got there and they they nudged on that door, those springs are going to help them lift that thing up so they can get in there and do what they got to do. Um, so it was an interesting requirement, but we, uh, we ended up figuring out how to do it and uh, actually worked out pretty well. Uh, another requirement was all these components had to be drawn in, in 3D software. And so the point of showing this drawing here, this is actually one of our middle drawings that we used on the project. The point of showing it is, is that IEC actually has in-house engineering uh, that can do 3D work. So we have the 3D custom capabilities. Um, so we can, you know, there are certain projects that we run into where one of the requirements is everything must be drawn in 3D. 
but we got a few guys on our engineering team that can that can do that. Um, so which is pretty cool, uh, pretty unique in our industry to have those capabilities in house. Um, but we we don't have just one guy that can do it. We have a few. Um, whether it be 3D AutoCAD or SolidWorks or whatever program it is, we have we have all that covered. And one last interesting uh, requirement that I'll talk about is we had to provide custom uh, speaker hatches. So again, this was a movie theater, so they had a bunch of speakers installed in this thing. And the requirement for the hatches was they were thinking about, you know, a year down the road, <clears throat> what if we have to service one of these speakers? How are we going to get to it? All the stuff is in the back of the speaker, so we need to be able to access that. So we actually ended up um, designing these custom speaker hatches. Uh, so they were just they they had seals on them, obviously, and they were just attached with some uh, with some some screws. So if they had to service one of the speakers, they'd get up on their their ladder or their lift and pop those screws out. And we actually uh, came up with a a design to it was we used the chain so that when they took that hatch off, it wouldn't go dropping down 25 feet to the ground. Obviously, that's not going to work. Uh, so we just we installed uh, a chain mechanism on there so they can just have it kind of dangle there. Um, obviously, it was a heavy-duty chain just to be safe, uh, but that allowed them the capabilities to access any of the speakers and you know do work on them or replace them altogether. Um, it was an interesting requirement, but uh, again, our design actually ended up working out really well, and the customer was really happy with it. So I put these pictures in here just to kind of show you what it ended up looking like. So the picture on the right is a rendering, um, but that the left the picture on the left is an actual picture of the the booth itself or the enclosure, or the sphere, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but they they can actually do um, they can like cast different designs and things on onto that material itself to make it look like the picture on the right. So it's really cool. It's it's free to go uh, to go in there actually. So if you're ever in Philadelphia. It's, this is in the Comcast World Headquarters. Um, it's the biggest, the tallest sky rise in Philadelphia. Uh, but you can go, this is just in the lobby. You can go in there and, and check out the movie. Uh, it's pretty cool. So definitely check it out if you're in Philadelphia. So that's actually all I have for you today. So I'm going to check the question box, see if anything's in there. So it says for the ACT suites, are closure plates provided in between the two rooms? Yeah, they are. So that's a good question. Um, let me skip back real quick. So the question is, are closure plates going to be provided for in between the two rooms? So there's this little four inch gap in between these two rooms here. That's just open airspace. Uh, so we will provide a closure plate um, to cover that gap so that you can't see straight down uh, through that airspace. Uh, we also can give you closure plates to tie off each wall into the host wall. And again, like I was talking about earlier, we can give you one that will attached to the roof and tie into the host roof. And the whole reason for all that is to just make it look like a complete unit that's actually part of your building and not just a piece of furniture that was dropped into it. And it looks like we got one more that popped in. Do you have any pass-throughs? What sizes if you do? Yeah, so as a standard, we have three different pass-through sizes. We have two inches, three inches, and four inches. Um, but we've, we've done a lot of custom pass-throughs before. Uh, we've gone all the way up to a six inch pass through. Um, that was for a research lab. So they were passing uh, a lot of wires through. And also some, not only were the, was it a lot, a lot of wires, but they had really large components on it. Um, so they needed a six inch pass through to be able to fit all that into the room. Um, we can also do, say you have like an RF shielded enclosure. We can build those pass throughs out of uh, steel tubing. And there, there's actually a, a formula that you have to use to figure out the length of that tube and, and what it needs to be to not allow RF uh, radio frequencies to pass into the room. I believe it's actually, it's based on the radius of that tube. We'll figure all that out. So we, we've done a lot of custom pass-throughs before, um, but again, our standard sizes are two inch, three inch, four inch. So I wanna thank you all for attending the IAC Acoustics Acutone 2 Architectural Enclosures webinar. Uh, I know your time is valuable, so I really do appreciate you spending some of it with me here today. Uh, if you like a copy of this presentation or want to discuss a certain product, uh, feel free to contact me at your convenience. Please also visit the IAC Acoustics YouTube channel for informational Did You Know videos about all of our products. And uh, thanks again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.